The Goat Owls is back after Monday Night Football. I'm breaking down how I think each NFL team looked in week five. Every single Monday night, I grade and tier every single team. Let's see where the teams fall this week. Starting with the Panthers tier, and I said it would not be the Panthers tier anymore as long as Carolina didn't get shellacked by the Bears. And what did they do? They got shellacked by the Chicago Bears. So they are in the, the, the tier remains, and they are in their own tier along with the Browns who are an absolute disaster, get destroyed by the Commanders. Just waiting for them to, something to click, something to happen. It just doesn't. It doesn't happen. They have way too much talent to be this bad, and I think we got to face facts that maybe the offense just isn't talented, even though it may look like it on paper slightly at least. Defensively is more where my issue is, even though defense is less of the issue, but it should be so much better given how this team is in terms of the talent that they have, at least on paper. And the Raiders might be the biggest disaster, you could argue, because the Devontae Adams distraction situation, they don't know who they want at quarterback. Some questionable coaching you know, decisions, like how to approach things, I'd say. And they're not playing well at all, obviously, and guys just don't want it like they did last year. That was kind of the thing they had going for them. They had, they had fire in their gut. They're not even the Cardinals, but they had fire in their gut. And they had a lead against the Broncos. Things were going pretty good early. And then that just completely went south. And they let the Broncos struggling offense score. And they've been getting better. But get that many points on them. So there's your Panthers tier teams for week five. Only two teams in the D tier. And both these teams didn't really get beat that badly. But I think they're definitely deserving of being the D tier. Yeah, the Steelers were one play away from winning. So you could say, well, they're that close to winning. But... I think this is borderline a pathetic loss. I think it's a brutal loss. It's one of those losses where you go, if, if they can't win that one, how can I fully trust this team? Of course, they're going to win games. I know the Cowboys are a decent team, but there's so many factors here. Both star pass rushers out going into the game. Brandon Cooks even has a freak infection thing going on. Being in Pittsburgh, prime time, they gives you advantage. I think the rain, the the you know the the sloppiness, uh, uh, you know of the weather, the field conditions should favor the Steelers with their ability to run the ball and the Cowboys' lack of that and lack of stopping the run. Given how this game went, the gifts that Dak Prescott was giving the Pittsburgh Steelers, all of that, and the Steelers cannot find a way to win this game. This game was made for the Steelers to win, going into the game and then definitely during the game, and they could not win. So it's that's a tough one. That is a tough one for them to lose there. And all of a sudden, they can't stop the run. Look at the last two weeks. So that's a problem going forward. But uh, besides the point, and the Seattle Seahawks, yeah, they had a chance to win. But, man, given the circumstances, the Giants missing their two best offensive players going in this game. I mean, their, their offensive player, Malik Neighbors. And the Seahawks get a 99-yard, like a fluky touchdown return. They're spotted seven points, essentially. And you can't do anything. No offense going, which was surprising. They can't block that Giants defensive line. Defense, not good the last two weeks. So it's two extremely disappointing teams that should do much, much better. So can't put them in the Panthers tier because they got they didn't get destroyed. But just, just extremely underwhelming. Quite a few teams in the C tier. I considered the Rams in the B, C tier because they hung around with the Packers. But, man, things were good. This was surprising. I thought the Packers would beat them up a little bit more. They were kind of shooting themselves, you know, in the foot. And the, things were going the Rams' way. I mean, the gift pick six from Jordan Love going into halftime. And even though they had a shot at the end, the Packers completely outplayed them in the second half. And they just couldn't find a way. So, I thought given the way this game was going, I felt like the Packers kind of hit the brakes a little bit too. Given the way how this game was going, I thought they probably should have won this game. Even though I was really given, wasn't giving them a chance going into the day. But, uh, yeah, so just... If things go that way, you should handle business. I know they're a very beat-up team. In the Bills, I thought about putting them in the BC tier because they had a good comeback against a good team, but this wasn't a great one. I thought things were kind of going their way down the stretch, which kind of helped them get back in the game. But the Texans were the much better team in this game. Uh, again, some things were really going the Bills' way. A little fortune to be back in that game. Josh Allen, who is the, kind of the MV, top MVP candidate right now, could not play well in this game. Looks like they're, you know... Even though Coleman has a big play here, but Miss Shakur looks like they feel like they need another weapon. Just couldn't really get anything consistent going. Uh, and then defensively, yeah, they figured it out, I guess, in the second half, even though the Texans were moving the ball. I mean, they could have put the game away so many times and they got in field goal range, no problem. Just some weird things that kind of took them out of possession or field goal range. Uh, you know, so just, just in the 
horrible coaching at the end there. I mean, just, just terrible. So they're in the C tier. And the Colts probably on the higher end of this as well. I consider them B C tier because how many points they scored. But it was really all fourth quarter. You know, fourth quarter Colts, we put them in the B, the A tier maybe. But it, you got to play four quarters. The defense was just embarrassing. Offense was solid throughout the game. But again, so much of it was in the fourth quarter when it was just, all right, ever go, go all out here. We're down. We can't stop them. So wasn't really thrilled about the game. And then it almost brings up questions. I know Richardson's the guy when he comes back, but it just makes everyone think like, is Richardson the guy? Are they better with Flacco? I, for one, think that they'd probably be better with Richardson against the Titans, specifically this upcoming game. It's a different debate, though. Uh, but it just brings up this, I guess, negativity about the franchise quarterback. Uh, but, you know, maybe if they had Taylor in that game as well, they could have won that one. But, yeah, just mainly a, the fourth quarter grade, high, but everything else, eh, even though the offense was all right, Flacco played pretty well, very productive. The Jets, yeah, they made a good comeback, but, I mean, the offense was ugly. They were fortunate to be in this game. They were fortunate to not be down by more because the offense did nothing early on. They had turnovers. They couldn't even run the ball. I know the Vikings are typically good stopping a run, but with these running backs, I mean, the run blocking, awful. They're making Morgan Moses look like the best offense line in football because offense line in football because they're awful without him. Uh, pass defense was pretty solid. Couldn't really stop the run until Aaron Jones went out, but yeah, just just don't don't they don't look like that good of a team here. And then the Niners, they outplayed the Cardinals for a portion of this game, maybe most of it, but they choked. Uh, I didn't like the play calling. Maybe I, I would prefer more runs over pass attempts when they had that much of a lead. Defense doesn't really have much of a pass rush. You know, saw the Commanders get after Murray last week and they couldn't do it. Uh, you know, then you have the Patriots. Yeah, losing to the Dolphins in their current state is pretty bad, but. They ran the ball very well. They, they were outplaying the Dolphins for a majority of this game. They just kind of choked and, and let it slip away. So they weren't god-awful. I wish they would have ran the ball more because they were very, very, very effective on the ground. So I didn't like the play calling. I don't know how serious that play calling is uh, right now. They're not really – their focus really doesn't feel like it's on winning – that's kind of what the focus felt like going into the year. And the Saints who just played, uh, you know, and you could argue either way. You could move them up a tier, move them down a tier because you move them down a tier is because they got completely outplayed and dominated in this game. And it never really felt like they were going to win for the most part. Uh, and then you can move them up because, yeah, they kind of stuck in there with the Chiefs. The red zone defense was awesome. I split the difference in the middle there. Yeah, they got completely outplayed more than the score showed. The red zone defense is the best in football, and that showed in this game, and it kept them in the game. So the defense, even though it wasn't that great this game, it, it did. Um, they were they were actually in this game for a little bit, which was a little surprising. So I put them in the C tier. Maybe it's a little generous, but that's what they're at uh, after playing a um, undefeated, really good Chiefs team there. BC tier seems to be full of teams that won and didn't overly impress or teams that lost, and they were pretty impressive in a way. For, for teams that lost, but it's getting more and more important to win. Earlier in the weeks, it's like, you know, you try to get out there and win, but anything can happen. But now you got to you gotta find a way to get those wins. But Packers did get a win. It was pretty sloppy. They kind of dug themselves a little bit of a hole, just some sloppy play. Um, you know, I wish they would have closed it out a little bit better. I like the adjustments. They completely outplayed the Rams second half. Uh, you know, Xavier McKinney continues to be one of the better defensive players in football, one of the biggest uh, pickups uh, for them. But Jacobs ran well. Love, still not right, it feels like. Yeah, some drops out there as well. I thought Wicks would play a lot better, but uh, Kraft played pretty well. Just, it's not the full Packers I'm really expecting, but I, it's not a shocker they're not fully there yet. I thought they were going to be a team more towards the end of the year where they really get going, so I guess it kind of makes sense. The Dolphins found a way to get a win. I love the running game in this one. They dominated on the ground, so that kind of got them in this tier rather than the C tier, and they clutched up, and it felt like they were getting better again. Huntley got thrown in last week, so it kind of makes sense. Everything's kind of clicking a little bit. They still can't stop the run. Cowboys, yeah, it was very sloppy. Dak was turning the ball over, obviously, and it took the last play of the game, I mean, a fourth down play to win the game. But, man, your two-star pass rushers are out. Brandon Cooks is out. You play a team that's been pretty decent so far this year, a good defense, prime time on delay, find a way to win the game. I think that's overly – I think that's – Overall, I should say, pretty impressive. They're doing better on defense, too. I mean, they were atrocious for a while. They couldn't stop the run. They would look like the worst run defense football. Last two weeks, they're picking it up a little bit. Uh, um, interesting challenge next week against the Lions. Um, so I put them in this tier. I mean, I can argue bumping them up, and I can argue bumping them down because it was sloppy, but given the circumstances, pretty impressive. 
And then the Jags, yeah, offensively, you could grade him an A. I mean, offensively, fantastic. Explosive Brian Thomas Jr. is something. Trevor Lawrence, the last two weeks, played much better. Tank's Big B has been awesome the last two weeks. So you have a, a good running back duo there. Defense was awful. It should not be that bad against the Colts, against Joe Flacco, even though he can still play. But that many yards against you. Thought about them in the B tier because that offense. But, yeah, comparison to teams like the Ravens and the Falcons, teams that won, scored a lot of points, but they also gave up a shit ton of yards and points. Those teams played the Bengals offense and the Buccaneers offense. Jags played the Colts, so I felt good about them in the B, C tier. Bucks did well enough to win, uh, minus the pass defense. It's, we saw a stretch of it last season as, as well. They are missing Winfield. They stopped the run very well. They just could not stop the pass. Kirk Cousins is a good quarterback, but 500 yards, ridiculous, and just to kind of choke that game away. But the offense was pretty solid. They could have done a better job putting it putting it away. But they outplayed the Falcons for the majority of this game. The offense, you know, Baker in those weapons looked really, really solid still. But, man, that pass defense, it's bad. And the Bengals... Yeah, the defense is brutal. They had this game. They outplayed the Ravens for a majority or a portion, at least, of this game. Terrible coaching. I like Zach Taylor, but terrible, terrible coaching in overtime. Settling for a field goal, only running the ball when you're throwing all over him. Icing your kicker. Brutal. But the offense looks like one of the very best, like, top three offenses in football the last several weeks. So, it's a shame they only have one win, but it's a team that maybe on the brink of figuring it out. Maybe. Who knows? But uh, this is the tier they find themselves in. Uh it, based off their week five performance that's important this is based on only the week five performances there's some random people in the comments i think these are power rankings power rankings will be the next video next video after that our week six pick show cannot wait for that so make sure you join us subscribe to your notifications on on to the b tier the atlanta falcons yeah they the defense was a little sauce in that game and it, it took some clutch things to happen to beat the bucks but man that offense is something and i told you it's gonna everyone kind of knew it anyways but they would keep on growing, you know, at more and more chemistry because so many things are new, and we're seeing it happen. Uh, Kirk Cousins, Drake London, Darnell Mooney, these guys linking up and getting that connection going. It's growing day by day, week by week, and Kirk Cousins was magnificent in this game. Maybe the best performance from anybody this year, over 500 yards passing, a clutch win, a lot of clutch throws, getting the ball in time, knowing where it needs to go. I mean, there's plays where he knows he's getting pressured, and right before he gets hit, he turns and throws it to the right spot without knowing what the, what the heck's going on over there. Uh, and I thought, you know, Mooney had a bad drop as well, so there could have been, been even more. So good looks from this offense for sure, and a clutch win. This team's only going to get better. And the Ravens, very clutch offense. I mean, they're in the same boat as Falcons, is the Falcons. Yeah, they, the, the defense was awful. I mean, it's surprising. The, the Falcons wasn't as surprising, but... Like the Jags giving a lot of points, not that surprised, but the Ravens defense should not be this bad. I know the Bengals offense is really good, but the offense was so good, so clutch. They can win with the run. Lamar showing he can win with the pass. You know, other weapons, you know, stepping up, multiple tight ends stepping up. Zay Flowers uh, making big plays as well. Derrick Henry, of course, but Lamar was awesome in this game. So elite offense for the Ravens once again. And the Cardinals, yeah, some luck on their side down the stretch, like some of these other teams. Um, you know, it wasn't the prettiest thing, but at the end, the second half, they really clutched up. They played very well. Both sides of the ball stepped up. Things did kind of go their way, though, but just squeaked by 49ers. But that's kind of similar to some of, the others, of these these other teams. Things kind of went their way. Texans, yeah, I didn't love that they blew the comeback. I didn't, Stroud did not play well down the stretch at all. Um, so the bad looks here is they kind of allowed a comeback, and the bad look is you take Nico Collins away. Nico Collins is something – Take him away. Is this the Texans? Like, is Nico Collins the guy? I think Stroud's more important than to say that, but it looked like that in this game. You take him away and you got problems, but I don't think that's going like, to be the case going forward, but hopefully he's okay. But defense played very well. They kept Josh Allen, who's the top MVP candidate, in check. Uh, they outplayed most of this game. Things really weren't going their way. They could have closed this game out a lot earlier. Didn't need to kind of come down to that, but... That's kind of the Texans this year. They can't really fully put teams away. I would hope they can do it against the Patriots this week. Vikings, kind of same thing. They let teams kind of come back, but they dominate most of the game. Look like one of the better teams in football. Offense wasn't as good this week. They, they were moving the ball early. You know, things weren't really going their way either. Aaron Jones is running well, and then he got hurt. Uh, defense was awesome. They're clutch. They, they make plays. It's a close one. Uh, but for the most part in this game, they, they, looked, they completely were dominating the Jets, but they Slipped up a little bit, somewhat similar to last week, but they were a little better last week. They were better on defense this week, but 
Uh, Darnold kind of looked like Sam Darnold a little bit this week. Is it something to worry about? Not necessarily saying that, but I don't know if it's fully fair to expect the first four weeks Sam Darnold every week. But Jets do have a tough pass defense, but the Vikings find themselves in the B, t- in the B tier. A tier, three teams. The Giants, if you watched my video last night, were my biggest winners. And that video is kind of based off of not really how much you win or how dominant your, dominant your full team was, but how much you impressed me, surprised me. And the Giants won that. Uh, weren't supposed to win that game in Seattle, down your best players, and they just keep showing they're improving, and maybe they, that stalled a little bit last week, even though they, it was a winnable game that they showed against the Cowboys, but they keep improving. I mean, Daniel Jones is improving. The offensive line is, I mean, light years better than last year. Uh, run game even without Singletary. You know, Tracy looks you know, very solid, obviously. Darius Slayton stepped up. And then defensively, that defensive line led by Dexter Lawrence is something. It is a factor. If, if you're a team, even if you're some good teams out there, if you don't have the best offensive line or if you have a hard – the quarterback has a hard time dealing with defensive lines, specifically interior defensive line, the Giants are going to be a problem for you. They could beat you. So good looks for them. The Broncos, yeah, they probably would have been in the best tier if they – didn't start so bad or you know the same with the Giants if they kind of put it the Giants kind of let the Seahawks in the game at the end they let that 99 yard touchdown so it wasn't perfect but the Broncos did dominate you know most you know the rest of this game the offense actually got going as well defense slow start but got going the PS2 uh, pick six really changed things there but if that didn't happen would this have been a different game still confident with the Broncos but uh, yeah, it's a little bit of an odd start, but overall, they've been looking very good as they're shrieking right now. And the Chiefs, yeah, perfect world, better red zone offense. They would have been in the best tier. They probably been the best team of the day if the the play, the yardage, you know, put was put up on the scoreboard. They dominated the Saints, though. They absolutely dominated them. The defense played very well, minus you know a, a big you know deep pass. Uh, offense moved the ball on the ground through the air against a good Saints defense. Very consistently until the red zone. The Saints do have the best red zone defense in football. The Chiefs got to be a little bit better there. They would have been the best team on the week if they would have executed at least a little bit more in the red zone. But they dominated this game. Yardage, play, dominated. So uh, they're definitely an A A tier team. And only two teams kind of felt flawless, even though maybe there was some. I talked about the Giants were maybe the most impressive team of the week overall. But in terms of full game, both sides of the ball performances, I think you got to go with the Commanders and the Chicago Bears. Commanders keep on doing it. They had a test. I know the Bro- people might laugh at that. The Browns, they're 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 so bad. They're a disaster, and I do agree with that. But different a different test. It, every week's a different test in the NFL. But the Commanders have not played a good defense yet. I know the Browns' defense is underwhelming, but that is full of some good ball players there, and they continue their thing. They have weapons showing up everywhere. They got different guys. Next guy up makes a play. Jane Daniels continues to get better. All these weapons around him continue to get better every week. The, the coaching looks good, and, the, and defense as well. Two weeks in a row, the defense balls out. They're getting more and more pressure, uh, making more and more plays. The guys flying after the ball, you know, attacking downhill, is showing up a little bit more too. Uh, Frankie Louvu is a guy that I love. I love that free agency signing. It didn't really show up the first few weeks. It was very underwhelming, but. Um, yeah, guys are just stepping up left and right right now. And the Bears needed that. It was a make or break week really for the Bears because we needed to see a step up from Caleb Williams, DJ Moore, DeAndre Swift, that offensive line going against a poor uh, pass rush in the Panthers. So it was make or break. We need to see progress, and that's good signs, good momentum going forward. Or if you don't against that opponent, it's tough. It's a bad look. And they did it. And they did it and some, I'd say. They showed good uh, development, good pro- progression, I should say. Good signs. It shows, this a game like this shows good signs of future. And I'm talking about this season and, I guess, the, in future years as well. Um, so they can continue to feed off this. That's it's all positive vibes is is my takeaway from the Bears, which is what they needed. They can continue to feed off this going forward. Uh, defense continues to play well. I thought Br- Brisker's been awesome, and he's not traveling to London. Off topic, but he's not traveling to London because of the concussion. But I thought he's been fantastic for them. Um, but defense in general has been great. So those two teams kind of felt flawless. Again, Giants, Broncos, Chiefs, very close to being that A-plus perfection, uh, but an A will do. Uh, But there you have it in week five. Next video will be actual power rankings, ranking teams based on how they played so far all this year. We have some movement in that one after week five. And then our week six pick show Tuesday night, every Tuesday night, favorite time of the week. Can't wait for that. We have loads of content here, so join us. Like, subscribe to notifications on so you don't miss a damn thing. Very important to follow us on Twitter as well. It's going to do it. 
Thanks for watching. Goodbye.